Hold on to your butts because today is going to be a doozy. The most brutally honest review I've done in the whole of 2022. But before we get into that, let's cover the legal stuff. Both of these companies, Eight Sleep and Chili Sleep, also known as Sleep Me Now, sent me both of these products. I did not pay for them. They also have both sponsored videos on this channel. Neither company has a say in this video, nor do they get to see it before you do. All right, let's jump into the review. If you've watched any of my other videos on either of these products, you know that I swear by thermoregulation to get the absolute best night's sleep of my life. And both of these can definitely do that. And to that extent, they are both awesome. But now that the Sleep Me Doc Pro has a sleep tracker out, it's reached its final form, much like the Pod 3, I think now is the time for a proper review. I don't wanna to cover too much ground here, but for some people, me included, Packaging and unboxing is kind of important. I think the way people package their goods and ship it to you lets you know their level of commitment and care to their own product. And in this regard, I've got to give the packaging to 8sleep. They're both pretty good, but the 8sleep is definitely better. Now, as soon as you're done unboxing these, you're gonna to have to set them up. And the setup experience is kind of interesting. The Doc Pro's setup is much quicker because it doesn't prime the system during setup. Despite the setup process being faster, I honestly felt like I was gonna screw something up here though. So I just made a huge mistake, but I'm glad you got to see that. Don't take that thing out and then pour that in there. And the instructions just weren't very clear. There were several times where I'm like, dude, like, am I gonna be able to use this thing? Did I already, did I already blow it? And when I finished the setup process, I was like, yeah, I did a thing. And, then, and honestly, that's probably not the feeling you should be having, you should be like, well, no, duh, the instructions were super clear. Not the case with the Doc Pro. The Eight Sleeps setup process is so much more clear. It just walks you through it. It was super easy, but it does take longer, and that's because it does the priming. Now, during the priming process, which can take hours, you still can use it, just FYI. Also, this thing has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so connecting to Wi-Fi was so much easier on this. Both of these require Wi-Fi. This only has 2.4. This has both 2.4 and 5 gig. So for the setup win, I'm going with the Pod 3. During the setup process, you gotta fill these things up with water. Remember that they use water to cool or heat the bed. The That's how big the eight sleeps thing is. And I still have half a tank and it just falls right back into place. I'm honestly not gonna even take this out, but it is that big. It is maybe a third the size of this one. It's just a massive pain in the ass to take out and put back in. This thing has to be lined up perfectly, and if it's not, you're gonna have some issues. Issues we'll talk about later. Plus, the Doc Pro goes through water probably at five or six times the rate that the Eight Sleep Pod 3 does. Along those same lines, you'll get notifications from both devices when you're running low. So another big win for the Pod 3. These devices are meant to help you sleep better and you can't do that if it sounds like there are rocket boosters next to your head while you're trying to sleep. So how loud are they? Yes, they're not plugged into the bed, but it still works and it gives you an accurate representation of how loud each of these really are. What about the cooling and heating? Cause that's really what these are meant to do. Well, the Doc Pro is much more powerful than the Pod 3. And by powerful, what I mean is it allows me to reach a specific temperature faster and maintain that temperature longer. And there are a few reasons for this. One, it has more cooling units than the Pod 3 and two, the design of the grid, the cover that goes on your bed that holds the water is much closer to the surface than the Pod 3. There is a decent layer of insulation on the cover of the Pod 3. So the thing between you and the water, it's thicker. And so you just don't feel those cold spots nearly as much as you do with the Doc Pro. Some people will freeze out on this because of it. If you're a super hot sleeper and you want to reach that temperature very fast and stay there all night, this is the one you'd want. But just FYI, both of these can reach 55 degrees on the low end. And on the high end, this reaches 115 and 110. And if I'm being honest with you, anything over 105 is just kind of uncomfortable. And so I'd say the high end is kind of a moot point. 
operating the system is fairly the same as both of these use an app to operate each device. However, the Dock Pro actually has touch sensitive physical buttons, one to turn the device on and these two to adjust the temperature. Whereas the Pod 3 only has an app, so everything you want to control, you've got to do in the app. Both apps use a control wheel that easily changes the temperature, and both apps feature a sleep schedule. These sleep schedules are freaking rad. These sleep schedules let you set different temperatures at different times to help you stay asleep longer. Now the Dock Pro uses actual times for its sleep schedule, so at you know, bed is at 9 p.m. and you want your first temperature adjustment at 11 p.m. and your second at 3 a.m., etc. You set actual times, whereas the dock, or sorry, the pod three uses phases of your sleep cycle to make those changes. And in my experience, the pod three sleep schedule works better because your sleep phases aren't set up by the hour. They don't run like clockwork. Sometimes they start earlier, sometimes they start later. So having a device that can detect what sleep system, sleep phase you're in and change the temperature accordingly is a huge win. One thing I noticed that because this is operating on a schedule, if it does change and my sleep phase hasn't changed, sometimes that wakes me up. To further enhance those sleep schedules, both of these devices have sleep trackers and AI functionality. So how do they do this? Well, both devices actually monitor your vitals. By monitoring your vitals and your movement patterns, they know what sleep phase you're in and so they can adjust the temperature accordingly. However, both of these do this very differently. With the Pod 3, the sensors that are needed to detect those vitals during your sleep are actually built into the cover. They're insanely small, you'll never feel them, and there are a ton of them. These sensors will track all of your heart rate data and movement, so each morning when you wake up, you'll be given a sleep report that will show you the percentage you hit for the night. Time to fall asleep, time slept, weight consistency, time to get up, the ability to add tags to your sleep report for long-term analysis, a hypnogram, and tosses and turns. Now, the AI functionality from the Pod 3 is called Autopilot, and it needs seven days to calibrate kind of a profile on you. It's not only looking at all of your past history of all of your uh, nights of sleep, but it's also measuring the ambient room temperature, weather patterns, etc. And so Autopilot, monitors all of that information, and then according to your sleep schedule, it changes the temperature accordingly to keep you asleep as long as possible. Now the Dock Pro goes about this a little differently. It uses an additional device that you must connect to the Dock Pro. It uses a small mat placed underneath your cover on top of your mattress. This needs to be plugged in and connected to your Dock Pro via Bluetooth. Now the insights you get are pretty cool too. It will show you a hypnogram, a breakdown of your sleep stages, time in bed, total time asleep, sleep latency, heart rate variability, resting heart rate, respiratory rate, and movements. It will also give you an hourly target of what it wants you to hit for both your REM sleep and your deep sleep. Now to further enhance that sleep schedule, once again, it uses AI called Hyber AI. It's very similar to Autopilot in the Pod 3, but here's where it differs. It adds a few more automations, like turn on and off the device if you're in bed earlier than normal, late to bed, decide to snooze, or if you get out of bed during the night, it will warm the bed to make it easier for you to fall back asleep. The real-time temperature adjustments, just FYI, are still in beta. So that's what the sleep tracking and the AI is, but what is it actually like to use? Both the Hyber AI and the Autopilot cost money. Yo, I thought I should probably clarify something. While I was editing, I realized that this is kind of confusing. The sleep tracking on the Pod 3, that includes like tosses and turns, your heart rate data, the sleep performance, uh, that's actually free. That comes included on the Pod 3. The only thing they charge for is the autopilot. That's their AI. On the Dock Pro side of things, sleep tracking, is a monthly fee that comes with their AI. So AI, sleep tracking bundled together, but also a monthly fee. For that reason, I gotta give a point to the Pod 3. All right, so I get back to editing. And we'll get into the details of what they cost a little bit later, but I don't think you should buy either of them at the moment. Autopilot definitely works. Every morning when I wake up, 
if autopilot is enabled, it will give me a notification and basically say, hey, these 25 changes were made during the middle of the night to help you sleep longer. And it actually asks you if those changes were helpful. There is no such prompt or anything on the Dock Pro, kind of the opposite. I honestly have no idea if it's working. I've had more than a few nights where the bed seems to stick at a temperature regardless of what the sleep schedule shows, or when I make a manual change on the device, it doesn't actually change. I can see the temperature adjust on the LED screen here, but over the next hour, the temperature doesn't adjust. It's almost like the Hyber AI is overruling what I'm doing. And because I'm not given any information from Hyper AI, like in the pod three, if I wake up, there's no prompt, there's no notification, no like, how are we doing? There's really no way to know how to troubleshoot it or if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Also the fact that the sleep tracker is an external device and it's not built in is super disappointing for two reasons. One, the actual chip and hardware that's inside the plastic encasing is so small that I don't understand why they just couldn't put it in here. And two, the tracker itself is incredibly cheaply made. This thing is so light and this cord is so bulky and heavy that that's what you're left with. But it feels super cheap. Like whatever's in here, like why did we not just put it in the Dock Pro? And it also uses which micro USB. Like this was not, we made this in 2008. Next, it depends on the accuracy of this tiny little mat. So instead of having the whole bed with those sensors, this has a small mat. Those mats are also pretty notoriously not that accurate. There have been more than a few nights where I'm not shown any deep sleep data. And if I check that against the whoop, I can clearly see that that's wrong. Okay, so who wins in this situation? Well, nobody really. I'm actually taking points away. One point from the pod three. Yes, the autopilot works, but I'm taking a point of, away because of a major quirk in the whole autopilot operating system. Autopilot needs seven days of calibration for every 21. And if you're like me, that's just not possible. One, this isn't on our primary bed. It's in the guest bedroom. Two, I travel a ton. There are plenty of months where I'm not sleeping in that bed seven days a week to utilize it. So if you're like me, you might be paying for a service that you can't even use all the time. Eight sleep, you really need to fix that. I'm taking two points away from the Dock Pro. The tracker isn't built in. It's super cheap feeling. I have no confidence in it. And it doesn't appear to be working because I have no information that would tell me otherwise. What about user experience, customer service, and reliability. Well, what I have to say might not even matter. Let's be honest, I have a direct line to both of these companies. If I have something go wrong, I can reach out and very quickly have an answer to my problem. I've also been given both of these devices. So I'm not your typical customer, and therefore I scoured the internet, Reddit, Google, a ton of reviews, to see what real people are actually saying about these devices. The number one malfunction I've seen complained about or people saying, hey, this thing broke, is sometimes the cover leaks. Now the replacement for those covers, if it is under warranty, is happening within a week. Customer service overall for 8sleep is pretty good. And when I checked the Better Business Bureau for any complaints, there haven't been any for the last 90 days. And total complaints tallied 19. There were 12 problems with product and services, four delivery issues, and three guarantee warranty issues, with the vast majority of those complaints being resolved as satisfactory. What's my personal experience with the Doc Pro? They sent me kind of like a beta unit. It wasn't the final product, it was like 90% done, but the main board that was in it, they knew they would later be switching out. And after about four months, I ran into my first problem. Basically, the water that goes in here was seeping out of this thing. Contacted uh, Chili Sleep, Sleep Me Now. They sent us a brand new unit. And I didn't have any of those problems. But now I had a new set of problems. Essentially, when I put in my sleep schedule, 
it just wouldn't turn on and it didn't do that for a while and eventually the sleep schedule started working meaning like it was on I could see it like the actual schedule but it would just turn on at all random hours of the day two o'clock in the afternoon it would turn on turn off sometimes the uh, the the hot awake feature, the warm awake feature, that's basically when you wanna wake up, it'll heat up to wake you up. Both of these do that. This would do it at like 3 a.m. And now I'm like wide awake because I'm burning. <laughs> so that was pretty frustrating. But once I got the hybrid AI and the sleep tracker, that problem stopped as well. I just now have sleep tracker problems. So that's my personal experience. When I hopped onto the Better Business Bureau, these were the complaints that were filed. There were 10 complaints made in the last 90 days and the total amount of complaints tallied 60, basically three times higher of the pod three. Those complaints were 41 with problems and product service, 14 guarantee warranty issues, three complaints going to delivery issues, one complaint being advertising and sales, one complaint being billing and collection. Most of the complaints were resolved in a satisfactory manner though. Overall, reading all of these complaints, reading all of these concerns, it seems like not enough is being done to make the customer feel like they're valued. Customer service and support from a simple reply time is way too long. One, two days, I get it, things are crazy right now and lots of people are understaffed. However, when I'm seeing emails that were like, you didn't get back to me for 10 days, super unacceptable. I'm sure you have had experiences like me where I buy something and I send uh, an email saying, hey, what's going on? If I don't hear from that company for four or five days, I'm like, you don't give a shit about me. You've got my money and now that relationship, you've just like washed your hands of it. That's probably not the case, but that's how me and you, the customer feels. And that's not okay. All right, let's end this thing with the cost and my recommendations. Now, I'm not including the actual mattress here. Uh, Eight Sleep does offer a mattress, their own mattress. We're gonna exclude that. We're just talking about the covers, the things that have the technology. To cover a queen size mattress, you're gonna be spending $21.95 on the Eight Sleep Pod 3 and $14.95 on the Sleep Me Dock Pro. If you want sleep insights, tracking, and the AI functionality, it's $20 a month for both sides of the bed. See, this is where it gets a little crazy. If you want to regulate just one side and have sleep tracking for just one side, you can. With the Sleep Me system, you can't with the Pod 3 or any of the Eight Sleep stuff. So it's $10 per side, depending on the length of the contract you buy for the, uh, the sleep tracking. It can be as much as $40 a month, which in my opinion is freaking ludicrous. If you want the sleep tracking, the autopilot from Pod 3, that's going to cost as much as 15 bucks a month, but again, you're getting both sides of the bed with that. So despite the cost, my recommendation is with the Pod 3 from Eight Sleep. The experience has just been better, smoother, and given the customer feedback, sounds like it's a safer bet. When these devices work, they're amazing. And if you were to get one, I would wager that you'll never go back to regular bed sleeping again. I really appreciate you watching. And if you've made it this far, please hit the like button and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any questions at all, if you want to have a discussion, let me know down in the comments below. I pretty much reply to every single one. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.